I'm very bad at that. And then we'll jump in. All right, so it is recording. We've got that going. Perfect. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Google X. Uh, to engage our students in deeper learning and to create some learning experiences for our students um, on their own and gather um, information from um, different places. So Google Google Expedition is an amazing approved um, in self-service. We're a very lucky district in that we actually have um, expedition kits that can be used throughout the district. However, obviously we're not in face-to-face -face environment right now, so we might be thinking, well, how am I going to get my hands on um, those devices so my students can still have this experience? And the answer is um, they don't need it because our kids have iPads and so they're able to um, use this app right on their iPad. Um, so essentially what this tool or this app allows for is for our students to explore the world far beyond uh, the physical classroom or in this instance, the physical environment that we're in um, through virtual and augmented realities. Virtual reality essentially just takes them to another place. Augmented reality brings objects from another place into their own environment. Um, all of our students have the capability um, to use the virtual um, reality through Google Expeditions. Um, however, the augmented reality, they can access it and view it, um, but depending on which version iPad they have, um, they're going to get a, a different experience. Um, you do need the Gen 5 to actually get the full augmented reality um, experience there. So if you decide to go down that avenue and your kids are saying, oh, I can't see it, it might be because of the version iPad they have. I definitely know that there are many tools out there that can provide um, VR and AR, AR experiences, but the really great thing about Expeditions was that it was built by experts specifically for use in schools. And so that's the, the reason why we demo most often um, Google Expeditions and we really um, encourage you to get started using that with your students. So um, to get started using Google Expeditions, you are going to need your iPad. This is one of those, um, times where, let's just see here, I know it's kind of, there we go. Um, this is one of those times where you might think, oh, um, can I use this on my Mac or do I need my iPad? You do need your iPad for this because Expeditions runs specifically through an app. Um, so teachers, you can get uh, the Expeditions app from the App Store or you can get it from self-service the same way that our students would go about getting it. Um, so if we pop into self-service here, I'll just show you where it's located. Um, I like to use the drop down here and it's going to be under our Google Apps and there it is Expeditions um, with the little flag. So you do need to have Expeditions installed on your iPad to be able to use um, Google Expeditions. So as the teacher, you're going to want it because you're going to want to be able to search through and find um, the different things or the different um, tours or expeditions that you want to use. And the only way that you can do that is to um, use it on your iPad. I will show you in just a minute um, a resource that, that is available for you to be able to use your Mac to search what's there. Um, but you will need your iPad. You will need to install that app, um, as will our students. Once you've got um, the app installed, and I've already got it on my iPad, so I'm just going to take a second here and let you um, Make sure that you can find it and make sure that you can download it um, before I go on to the navigation. So once it's downloaded, it's going to look just like this right here. Okay, that is our Google Expeditions app. So just take a second, download that app from self-service if you don't already have it, um, and then we'll move forward. I already have the app on my iPad, so I did just go ahead and launch it. Trying to figure out which way my iPad looks the best on the screen here, so bear with me. We're going to go in landscape mode. It gives me a little bit more to work with. All right, hopefully everyone's been able to get in there and to kind of uh, get it downloaded. If it's not um, downloaded yet, it does take a little minute because there's a lot um, in the app um, to download. But if you don't have it yet, eventually, once you launch it, this is what you're going to have. Um, just a key, a few key pieces here. 
about the navigation inside of uh, Google Expeditions. It's really easy to use. Um, essentially, up here on the top, you've got your search bar, so you can search for any topic that you're looking for. Um, so you can do a keyword search. Um, the other features that I really like here is it allows you to search for AR, which is your augmented reality. Remember, augmented reality brings objects into your environment. So I might not normally have a whale living in my dining room here that I'm in, um, but by using that augmented reality, I can bring a whale in here so that I can inspect it. And your virtual reality, your VR, um, that's going to take me from my dining room here out somewhere else. Today, for our sakes, and, and kind of playing off of what Brian had started with yesterday, we're going to be talking about coral reefs um, and some lessons pertaining to that. So we'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Um, so you have those two key, those three key features. You've got the search the tours. You can specifically search for AR. You can specifically search for VR. Those are the ones that I use the most. But as you can see, they have other topics on the top um, that might behoove you in your searching as well. Something else I want to just briefly point out is your discovers tool. That discover tool is your navigation to get back to searching for all expeditions. Your library is where your downloaded expeditions are going to be. In order to view an expedition, you do have to download it. I've got a couple here that are pre-downloaded um, because I was doing some exploration and preparing for today, but you do have to um, download it before you can launch it um, for yourself and for your students. So your library is where those are going to be kept. Um, and the class feature here would come into play if you were trying to connect this in the classroom, but seeing as how we are not in the classroom, we can't actually run a class expedition, um, teacher run expedition, uh, because we need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi um, and in a specific distance to connect to the teacher device. But that's where you would connect your classes um, if you were in a face-to-face -face environment. So let's go back here and do just a little bit of searching. So when Brian and I were talking, we said, you know what, let's let's pick a choose a topic that um, could be relevant for our littles all the way through our 12th graders and we said okay what's something like in the environment um, and the first thing that we both agreed upon was coral reefs um, so if i'm just going to do a keyword search here and type in coral reefs you can see that things are already generating and i can hit enter and there are many 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 options here um, the only disadvantage to the Google Expeditions app inside of the app um, is that in order for me to preview what's inside of um, each one of these expeditions, I actually have to download it. I may not want to download all of this content, and that's where the resources that I'm going to show you next are going to come into play. Um, so I'm going to go off of my iPad here, my iPad view for a minute. Um, and then I'm going to jump onto the website that I shared for you. So part of this website um, could be used in conjunction with launching this with your class. Um, but one of the other tabs on the website here, which is our reach tab, that's going to give you an easy way for you to be able to go ahead um, and search expeditions without actually having to be in um, in inside of the app, right? So these two resources that I'm sharing with you are created and maintained by Google. Okay, so one is called an awesome table. This is the one that I prefer um, and that I really love uh, because it breaks by topic, um, but it also um, lets you know what the scenes are going to be inside of the expedition. Um, so just, just to kind of uh, lay it out for you, each expedition um, is set up into multiple parts. So each, each expedition complaint contains um, multiple scenes. Um, on each one of those scenes, you've got background information that's built in, um, leveled questions are provided, um, and you also have specific points of interest inside of those, uh, inside of those um, scenes. Um, what the awesome table allows for you to do is I can do the same thing here. I can say I am looking for virtual reality. I want to take my kids somewhere outside of their house. I want to take them somewhere outside of my classroom. I want to give them this immersive experience. Um, so I'm going to choose virtual reality. Then I'm going to type in here coral reefs. And I'm just going to hit enter. And now everything that has to do with coral reefs is going to start generating, right? So I can see right now there are eight different ones that are popping up. So here's the beautiful nature one. Here's a conservative one. 
Um, and what's really nice about the awesome table is it gives you a breakdown of what's inside of each of these. So I don't have to physically download it onto my iPad before I can preview the content in here. So I can look at the content, um, the description, and then the available scenes, and I could say, hmm, you know what? That's not really what I'm looking for. Um, so today, for, for the purpose of the lesson that I'm going to share with you in just a few moments, I was really looking for, I wanted to dive deeper into coral reefs and what they are in animal life and life the ecosystem um, in the ocean but more specifically i wanted to really focus on like what's there and how sustainable is what's there and what as humans can we do to continue to um, sustain that beautiful um, ocean environment um, so as i was perusing i came across the world ocean um, scene and, and i kind of liked what was here because it contained um, information about the oceans around the world one ocean because they're all kind of linked into one um coral reefs deep coral reefs um, and then it got to the ocean pollution and the coral bleaching um, and some more research there and so as i was looking at those uh, features, I was like, you know what, this is going to be uh, best for what I want to look at and for what my learning um, targets are going to be for my students and for the purpose of bringing this expedition into the classroom. So the awesome table kind of gives you the ability to drill down and see what's inside of there without having to actually download it to your iPad. So that is the awesome table option. That's the one I use most frequently. And you've also got the spreadsheet view. And again, this is updated by Google. So when you come into the spreadsheet view, um, you get the same information. It's just a different format. You can toggle between, um, VR. right now we are looking on the VR, um, and then you can switch to the AR. Um, use your command F search function. Um, and do keyword searches here as well. So um, if I were to keyword search for coral reefs, the same information is going to come up that I was just looking at in the awesome table. And then I can just flip through all of the places where coral reefs is brought up and I can look at the content that's there as well. Um, so if you are like me, you like to be able to start with your, your searching ability first and not have to download it. I wanna know what's there before I download it because the more that I download, uh, the more space it takes up on my iPad. Um, so these two features really give you the ability um, to do that. Uh, what I'd like to do now, first of all, I'm just gonna pause there, see if anybody has any questions before we move on and actually get into um, an expedition and what's inside each of those expeditions. Um, so if anybody has any questions right now, just go ahead and let me know. Um, I'm going to practice my wait time here and and just let you kind of pause to think. Do you know if there is a way for people to build? I just was looking at a law office. Are, are people able to build expeditions as well? I'm just curious. Uh, okay, so building the expeditions in, in terms of actually building an expedition that can be published to the expedition site or just building your own tour. Um, so there, yeah. Um, so yes, uh, I can't answer the, the question too because their their policy has been shifting on who gets to submit things to the official expeditions website um, because they're very particular about what's there and what gets published and making sure that they go through and vet it because it is there for teachers and it is created for classrooms. So they're very particular about um, what's there. But there have been um, tools that have been built specifically tour builder that allow you to create um, tours of different places. The district actually has um, a Theta camera, which is a 360 camera um, that allows you to go into any space and with the click of one button capture 3D images. I was able to build, um, when we first got the camera, I was super excited and I was able to walk around and build a tour of West High School um, in just a few, I think it was about 30 minutes, I walked over all the spaces, snapped pictures, and then I dropped it into the tour builder, and I quickly and easily was able to build my own tour. Um, That's awesome. And yeah. a specialist teacher. So we were talking about as kids, you know, like the kids who aren't able to transition fifth grade to sixth and eighth to high school, we could have been doing some things like this. Yeah. If construction weren't a thing. <laughs> Yeah, there's actually a group, um, there's a group up from northern part of the state that actually um, partnered with DPI to create um, tours of like local landmarks almost. 
So there's there's tours created of Indian reservations. There's tours created of um, different like postal offices and different career tours created. And they've actually published the site and it's actually published as a resource on the DPI. So we have the ability to create any type of tour we want and we've got the tools that we need to, to make it really good. So yeah, definitely we have that capability. Go ahead, Brian. I just dropped in the Google Tour Creator link is in the chat as well. So if anyone wants to go check it out, it's really easy to use. I've, I've built a couple simple ones. Um, probably without the Theta camera, you're not going to get quite that same level as what you're seeing in the expeditions, but it is pretty easy to use. So it might be worth a check, Cody. Cool. Yeah, and our student iPads actually, I mean, it definitely, again, the Theta camera was specifically built for that person purpose, but the, the student iPads have the ability to take the 3D images too. And, and they're pretty, they're pretty decent images. You just kind of have to hold your iPad and click where the dot moves. Um, so it takes a little bit longer, but you can get relatively decent images to use in tours as well. Any other questions? All right, then we're going to dig in a little bit deeper here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my iPad back up. Um, and let's take a look at that. I'm going to just minimize my screen behind here. Um, so that, well, I don't know if that makes it less busy, but <laughs> well, we'll just roll with it, right? Okay, so I've got my iPad up here. Again, you can't launch a whole Google Expedition right now because you're not in contact, close contact with your students, um, but you do have the ability to still use this resource, and your students have the ability to still use this resource. Uh, just very quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one open and show you what's all there. Um, but then I'm going to point out some really cool things that that um, I think our kids are really going to love about this. So again, I'm working with the World Ocean Expedition here. When you launch it, you have the ability to come in here and, and select view or view in VR. I'm going to choose the view first, and I'm just going to show you what's there. But then I'm going to show you the view in VR because there is an audio version in there that I think might be really cool for our students um, who maybe don't have high reading levels or who perhaps want a little bit of that instruction. And there are audios there that can be read to the students. So um, we're going to just do view first. And this is the kind of the layout of every um, of every expedition, right? So as the teacher, if I wanted to do this like in a class meeting, I could launch this and share my iPad to my students. And literally, I am taking them on a virtual tour. Obviously, you've got to be very careful about how fast or quickly you move. But using your iPad that we have, you get a pretty good image of what's there, right? And so I can see all of this different information. And I am with my students right now and leading them along this tour and starting this exploration. I can navigate, I can turn the angles, um, but what's really awesome is that as the teacher, I'm getting this content here that pops up, right? So I may not be the expert on World Ocean, um, but I don't have to be because I can preview the content that's here and then I can go about building in questions or extensions or um, look for that I really want to address with my students. But the anatomy of each one of these um, expeditions is that it comes with that content, expert content preloaded. Um, it has those leveled questions that I was talking about. So for each um, scene, you get a beginner, intermediate, and advanced question. Depending on the level of students that you're working with, you could choose to go with one of them, or you can completely go um, and develop your own questions. And you'll kind of see um, in a little bit how I've designed a lesson that kind of goes along with this expedition. Um, and then each expedition also um, provides points of interest. So when I click on that point of interest, it specifically directs my attention to a certain area on the screen. As the teacher, I can zoom in and I can really have the kids get a closer look at this. Um, and then I also have the content that goes along with it. When I'm ready to move on to the coastal zone, I simply press that and then here it is and I can zoom in um, and I can and can really use those um, specific points of interest um, to hone in on specific content. When I'm done with this scene of the expedition, I simply minimize it, scroll over, and then I can go to the next scene and it's going to change um, what's there. So here is a different scene. This one's open waters. Um, I give the students a little bit of time to look around and to see what's here. All right, and then I can again go to those beginner, intermediate, or advanced questions. 
Um, and then I have my points of interest again. So this is when the kids usually go, oh, ah, right? Because now they've never seen a whale up this close and now it's like right in front of them, um, which is kind of really cool. And so again, you have the ability to really drill in and to point things out to your students and that content goes right along with it. Um, oftentimes when I'm using an expedition, I am very selective about which content I choose to use in the expedition because not all of it is going to be relevant to the learning that we're doing in class at that specific moment. So you want to really make sure that you preview what's there and you decide, okay, what's going to add um, and deepen learning for my students, add to what we're already talking about or deepen that learning for my students and decide which parts you want them to really dig into. Um, again, the reason why I chose this one is because it kind of had that um, that world ocean view okay, about that. It also had the coral reefs, but then it also kind of drilled into pollution and sustaining um, our coral reefs. So here's the coral reef one, all of that information there. It points out some of the specific um, reefs there, it points out some of the wildlife, um, it points out how the coral reefs form. Um, so just a ton of really, really beneficial information here. Um, so as a teacher, you have the ability here to launch and to begin this exploration with, with your students by screen sharing your iPad. So that's what's connected here. Um, so this would be an example of a uh, virtual reality expedition. I want to very quickly show you what I was talking about when I said there's audio included here. So obviously we don't have the goggles at home. Some kids might have them, but we can't uh, provide that for every student. But um, when I was playing around, I found some interesting kind of pieces here. So it's telling me, hey, you have to flip your iPad. But if I say, uh, let's do, just go switch it here. Let me see here. We know it works, it's just being slow. There we go. All right, so this is kind of hard to look at. This is what it would look like if it was in a viewer. I don't really love that because I don't have a viewer and it's forcing me to look into two spaces. If I select that little square box down on the bottom, now I'm getting what's inside of the tour in a more 3D look. And I have the ability to come in here and have what's here read to me. So if I go here and you have to kind of match up the dot, and then once it's on, there we go. And if I click here, now it's going to read it to me. And hopefully the audio will work. I had the audio working earlier this morning. So let's see if I can get this roll in here or if it's going to be difficult. All right, so here's the content. Audio is turned on, but I'm not hearing anything. Let me see if I can adjust the volume here. Oh, I know what it is. It's because I have my headphones in. So let's see here now if we can get this working successfully. Zoom in. All right, there's the audio. Tap it. And now tap on the one that I want it to read. And hopefully. Oh. All right, so what happens when it's not docked to my computer? or not having interruption with me unplugging my headphones. Maybe if I go out and come back in, let's try that. But you actually get the audio and it will actually read to you um, all of the content that's there. And the student is able then to go through. So while Chris is doing this, I just want to say we've been having this issue. It is is not, I don't think anything issue with WebEx. We've got like three different filters going on here. We've got Kristen's audio going into her Mac, then her Mac sharing that back out with you and her Mac sharing her audio with you so that you could hear her. So um, this is a really good one for the kids because they don't have any of those filters. It's going to work right on their iPad. It's just really hard to show it in this WebEx uh, meeting space. Yeah, and when I was not screen sharing from my Mac, I had no problems with it plugged into my Mac. Um, I think it has to do with just trying to do too much at one time. But anyway, you get the kind of the options here. So um, I can choose to go to each one of these, right? So if I click on that with my pointer, it pops up the information and the audio then begins to read to the student, which is really cool. And again, this would be something that they would self navigate. So you would set up that learning experience for them. Um, and if they get to a point where they say, okay, I'm ready to go to the next slide, 
they get right here and they can pull up the scenes. And just as we were able to navigate before, we're able to navigate through to each one of the scenes um, that are in here. So it's kind of cool. You can um, go to each one of the scenes and you can decide which one you want to stop at. Um, but like I said, the real value of this feature and of using it this way is you really do get that 3D feel and look and experience, right? And I can keep turning and I can look up and down and, oh, there's the diver that's actually taking the pictures of the expedition. So I am really feeling in this when I use it in this mode that I'm actually experiencing this and I'm actually going in here um, and, and looking around and feeling like I'm on a virtual tour. Um, and when it's not docked to my Mac and connected to WebEx, you get that audio there, which is really nice for our students who, A, want it to be read to them, or B, need a little bit of help um, digesting the text that's there. Um, so that's a really cool feature. Um, one other thing I want to show you here before I launch into um, the kind of lesson pathway that I've got created here for you is just an AR example just to show you how they look different. Um, so. Let's see here. I think it was ecosystems of a coral reef, right? So this is the one I was talking about where your students um, and I'm going to put my headphones back in because it's easier for me to hear them. Um, but this is the one that I was talking about um, where you're bringing in an item that wouldn't necessarily be in your environment into your environment, right? So I'm going to go ahead and launch the viewer here. All right, what it tells me to do is it's saying, hey, you need to find a space. And when I tap that space, you see how this object just appeared here. And now, as a student, I'm able to get up. Well, not if your headphones are plugged in. Um, but you're able to get up and move around and navigate around this space. And you're able to look at it from this view. You can look at it from side view. You can look at it from over here. So you have the option of really exploring and bringing that. And it really does look like it's sitting on my dining room table, right? You have the same content available here. So your students can get some more of that content. And then they have the ability to go to another scene, right? So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so all of you can see what just popped up. Um, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a sea anemone that close in my life. I'd probably to be too afraid, to be per perfectly honest. Um, to go diving to find them. Um, so you have this, this kind of ability to kind of uh, bring these items into your environment, um, which we have found our kids really, really love and get excited about and can engage with. Um, so those are the two different types of expeditions you've got available. This one here, augmented reality, we're bringing things into the environment that don't necessarily belong there or we wouldn't necessarily see there. Um, and virtual reality, we're going somewhere else. We're going on a trip, on an expedition. Um, okay, so the next thing that I just wanna show you here real quickly is once as a teacher, you figure out, you know what? Yep, that's the one I wanna use. I really, this is the one that's gonna work for me and my students. Um, how do we go about getting that to that? Okay, so the way that you'd wanna do that, again, you'd have to have it in your library downloaded. And the way that you can do that is you can share out the expedition. So I'm gonna go back to the World Ocean one um, that we started with. And I have the share option in the upper right hand corner. If I go there, what's really nice is it has brought the ability to go ahead and share this to Google Classroom, which generates a link for our students. And when they click on the link, the link will open up right into expedition. So they still have to have the app on their iPad, but if they have the app on the iPad, it's really quick and easy. Instead of having them try to key search, uh, key keyword search for the, the expedition and potentially spelling something wrong um, or, or that way and struggling to find it, this will put it there right for them. So in Google, Cla I'm gonna go to Google Classroom and I've already got an assignment um, set up. That's one of the things that you do have to do is you wanna have your assignment set up first because once you get this option here, it tells you that you can attach it um, to an assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it to an assignment. Um, and the assignment that I'm attaching it to is let's dig deeper with Google Expeditions Exploring Coral Reefs. Right? Um, and you can see that there's already something attached here. Um, and that's going to be the lesson that we're going to dig into in just a minute. 
I'm going to go back and I'm also going to attach that AR one for them as well. All right, go to Google Classroom, attach to assignment. Okay, and I can see there's the link for the first expedition that I shared there. And now the link to the second expedition that I shared will be there. I just want you to see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to bring you into the Google Classroom um, environment so that you can get a look at what your students would see when they go to this assignment. Um, and just, just so you know, right now, I, I'm logged into Google Classroom, not as myself, the teacher, but as myself, person, the student. So this is exactly how your students would see it if you went ahead and posted it this way. So I'm going to go into my test class. And underneath the classwork tab, if I go to the Google Expeditions, let's dig deeper. And I open up that assignment. Oh, there they are. So I have to open up that assignment first with the arrow. And then here is the slide deck that we're going to be using. So the students would open that up. And then here are each of the expeditions so that they know, okay, I need to get to this expedition. I go ahead and I open it up from Google Classroom. All right. Also from Google Classroom, they can go ahead and they can open up the workflow um, for this kind of deeper exploration. Right, so it's taking a minute because there's kind of a lot embedded in um, the Google Slides presentation. Um, but while that is taking a minute to load, I'm just going to take you over to that website because we can get a look at what's there um, via the website while this is loading on my iPad. All right. So um, let's have access again to this website. So the real beauty of expeditions is that it's cool. There's the awe factor. Kids really love it and they naturally want to engage with it. The thing about expeditions is it's just, it's, it's simply not enough um, to just set your students loose. Can that be efficient? Will it engage them and will they want to um, get there and take a look at stuff? Yes, absolutely. Um, but you really want to think about what's the learning benefit that we have here. And what's my learning target for sharing this with my students so that it is really a focused kind of deeper dive into content that you're addressing in your lessons and in your class. Um, so I recommend it's never a bad idea to have Google's Google expeditions um, kind of hitch hitting there. If you finish this, you have the opportunity to extend learning by independently going here. Love it. Great option um, because it's still attached to the learning. But when you decide to really implement um, expeditions into your curriculum to really get at core concepts and deepen learning, you really want to set up those learning experiences with it. Um, so what I have here is just kind of a mock setup of how you might launch things with your students. You could give students the website um, because that slide presentation is launched here. Um, but if you take a look at the website, it just kind of is a little overview. I found this really great video and I, I, I will freely admit um, the one thing about the video that I hate is that I couldn't center align it because Google Sites wouldn't let me do that. Uh, but it's a really awesome video um, that shows the slow and I don't know if you can hear it, but it has some cool music that goes along with it. Um, but it is like slow motion um, of reefs and coral and uh, different sea creatures and, and um, features is kind of just growing and it shows them that slow life. So to launch this with students, I might play this video because you're going to see once we jump into the lesson that the first thing that they're going to do is kind of dive into their background knowledge. Um, so just a quick video, I think it's in total, it's, it's like three minutes. So you wouldn't necessarily need to watch the whole thing, but look at the technology here of this underwater um, kind of capturing of how these things grow into the beautiful masses that they become. I think it's just kind of pretty amazing, right? So I might start and launch by going here and then the students can get to the adventure through the Google Classroom or they could get there here um, through the adventure tab. All right. And this is embedded here again, more for your resource, because if you want it, I encourage you to take it and to use it. Uh, but here's kind of how I might go about embedding a Google expedition exploration into some of that, um, deep, deep, deeper learning in the classroom and really looking at, okay, what are some things I want to achieve? What are some things I want my students to know? 
um, by the time that they're done with this exploration. It's also designed to be a lesson that spans over about a week, right? So there isn't something that the students have to do every day, but there are um, a series of activities that by the end of this time, they will need to have completed. Um, so I'm gonna jump back over to the iPad version here because I really want you to see um, what that looks like for your students and how uh, some of that is set up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look here. So what I've got is I'm just using a um, Google slideshow and I'm gonna actually open it up in presentation in slides. So you can see really what's here in the deeper types of activities um, that I'm going with. So I'm using expeditions, but I'm using it in conjunction with other media sources as well. So it's not just here's expeditions, go and explore. It's, it's very um, kind of guided towards what I want them to achieve. So we're starting out here and launching again. I would launch with that video that I showed you. Um, but here is, why am I not clicking? I'm not clicking on my iPad, right? So here's the first part of it before we dive in assessing that background knowledge. Who do I know about coral reefs or about the oceans or about any of that kind of stuff? Who do I wonder and what do I hope that? Okay, so just a piece there. And then it's broken up um, into different sections. So when I get to expedition one, here's where I'm encouraging my students to go on a trip. So in my morning meeting, I might go as a whole class and touch on some key areas so that we get that whole class experience. But then I'm going to say to my students, okay, now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to go on an expedition. And here's where I want you to launch into um, those different um, expeditions. Um, so right here inside of the presentation, and again, this is just a Google Doc, and I modified um, the setup so that I could have it the size and shape that I wanted. But your adventure number one is you're traveling the world's ocean, learning all about coral reefs, which two resources I'm going to access, and they are both here and linked. Um, and then here's the activity that goes around it, uh, goes with it. So it's not a sort, okay, but it's more of an I spy. So as you are viewing both of those expeditions, you're viewing it with a goal in mind to capture or to capture some of the, the different features um, that are going to be seen. So I pulled out some of that key vocabulary. And the student's activity here is to, as they're exploring and reading or having it read to them, they are being able to gather images, right? Um, and their goal is going to be to create a collage that includes a sample of each one of these key terms for our learning and to create that collage. And what, after they've gone through and created the collage, they can find images both in either one of those expeditions. Um, they're coming back in here and they are creating that collage and inserting it on the page here that's set up for them. The next activity goes through here to a deeper dive. We're bringing in some more reading um, and some more kind of um, knowledge building. Um, so we're gonna dig in here and we're gonna investigate and research. Um, there's an article that is linked here. Um, and so I wanted to give them points of interest that they are reading for. So they have three questions that are at, um, attached here. So are corals animals, plants, or rocks? What are corals made of and how do they survive? So getting at what are they, what are they made of, and what, how do they survive in nature? Um, and then after you've concluded your deeper dive, I'm bringing in that resource that we worked on last week and I'm saying, here's what you're going to do. After you've gathered this information, I, it's not a worksheet. I don't want you to write something down and send it to me. I want you to talk about it and I want you to jump into Flipgrid and I want you to explain your thinking to me, right? So then I know, do you actually understand what corals are, how they're built, how they survive, okay? So bringing in a different media tool there so and a different format um, for those students who might not be as comfortable with some of the other formats that are presented to them. All right, and then moving forward, um, we're talking about sustainability, right? So sustainability, will the reefs survive? So they're beautiful, they're gorgeous, they're one of the most highly visited um, tourist attractions around the world, right? But, but what is the cost of that beauty and of humans wanting to explore that beauty in person, right? And how do we make sure that they are sustainable for the future? So we're digging into a little bit different information here. Um, and, and just so you know, the uh, articles and those things are linked. I'm just trying to save time by not 
um, clicking into them, but you have access to the website and you can get to any of those things um, that are linked in there, right? So going on to the sustainability piece, a little bit different of a setup here. Oh, again, clicking on my computer when I need to be tapping on my iPad. There we go. Um, so a little bit different of, of a extension. So on this page, you, there are two resources that are embedded. So we've got the video resource here. It's a very, very short video that specifically talks about um, plastics and how those things are damaging coral reefs. So some really, really good information in a very simple format, and it's just embedded right from uh, YouTube. Um, so through this video here, they're identifying at least four threats to the survival of the world's coral reefs. And that information is information that's included in that video, but it's also information that is represented in the Google expedition that they began with. So they can have that as a reference as well. So right here, they're listing those four threats out. Um, and then we're doing an infographic um, dig. And it looks like that infographic link is not there, but I will fix it as soon as um, I jump off the line here. Uh, but it's an infographic, and I can actually show you the infographic. Um, but it's an infographic that shows see here where is it okay there we go um, so it's an infographic that I've turned into a PDF um, and so a different way of accessing information right so we've got the slides we've got the expeditions with the content there we've got the video format but here we're working in um, a different type of accessing information by integrating that infographic which um, is really important for our students to be able to gather information in different formats um, so using that infographic format which essentially is just a condensed way to share information using carefully chosen language and images right but so they're going to analyze this infographic and their goal is from this infographic to be able to come back to it um, let me throw up my ipad screen again so their, their goal is to be able to come back from that infographic um, and talk about or identify, excuse me, identify um, the three main ways in which climate change impacts the reefs, right? So in this activity or in this portion of the activity, we're really talking about, okay, these reefs are here, they're beautiful, and how do we make sure that they remain beautiful and functioning for years to come so that we can continue to um, explore and learn and sustain this environment, this underwater environment, right? Um, and so the last thing that we're getting to then is where we're going to put it all together. Um, and what does that look like? So from the expedition, from the reading, from the video, we're gathering that knowledge, right? And, and putting it being able to gather that background, building out why this is important, why we should care about the coral reefs, and now how are we damaging them? So now the goal is to put it all together. And, and how are we doing that? Well, I'm having the kids create a public service announcement. Now, this isn't something that I want them to go and spend seven hours doing. In fact, they're only getting one minute to share their ideas and their thoughts, right? Um, but here's the... Um, prompt that they would see for the, pre, the PSA, right? So using all the resources that you've accessed, pitch a public service announcement about how each one of us can do our part to protect the coral reefs, right? And so where can they get this information from any of the resources that came previously? Um, there's lots of good examples on that infographic that's linked. Um, so they can really go to any of those areas to gather that information. They just have to choose one. It can be as simple as, you know what, I am not going to use plastic bottles or anymore. I'm going to recycle something very simple. Or it can be as complex as they choose. And their goal is to use Clips, also an app that is already in our infrastructure. Um, many of our students have previous knowledge working with it um, to record just a one minute PSA. Um, so essentially, this is expedition, all about expeditions and using expeditions but not using expeditions in isolation, using expeditions to work out a engaging kind of plan for a week or a time span, you know, that our students can come in and engage with things on their timeline, knowing that these are targeted pieces that you need to understand. And I'm going to know what you understand by the end of the exploration here, um, by what you create in your PSA. That's the long and short of it. I'm, I'm going to stop talking here for a minute um, and see kind of where you have some questions, um, where you might want some clarification, 
Um, anything you want to talk about? Let me know. And Brian and Wendy, also, if there is anything you want to add or a way, you know, that I haven't covered, uh, just chime right in. You will not hurt my feelings by jumping in. No, I think it's a it's a great share and uh, we were kind of chatting along the side here and just giving some ideas, but the larger context of all of this is whether it was book creator yesterday or Flipgrid last week or uh, today, Google Google Expeditions, Slides. Uh, Google Slides, yeah. Um, it, it is when you start to look at all the tools that we're talking about, the key is not just one on its own or not just, you know, for the sake of doing an expedition today, but how do we really form this into a whole lesson? So Christine did a really nice job of showing us how this, you know, expeditions on its own is great, but how do we build it so that we can really get down to the core learning that we want? And so that's what bringing the slides in was really powerful today. And as you were talking, Brian, I just added in the threats to coral reefs infographic. Um, so that is there for anyone should they choose to use it. Uh, we've posted in the, <clears throat> sorry, we posted in the chat several times link to the Google site with all of this information embedded. I highly encourage you, if you're interested in doing something like this, to go in and dig and see how it's all put together, um, because you can obviously adapt something like this for your own needs. Yeah. If you're just getting started with expeditions, there is absolutely no harm in doing your first expedition with your kids just to see how it works, right? Just going out there and trying one and like, okay, what did this feel like? We do the same thing with each other. So uh, sometimes you just have to test the tool with the group and see what it feels like. Yeah, definitely. If you're if you're just jumping out, there's nothing that says, you know, you have to have this whole large extended plan, um, but always, always have some sort of purpose. Um, because if you don't set that learning purpose early, then then it is just a fun kind of thing that they, they want because it's fun and they don't associate it with the learning. But I, I definitely agree, Brian. There's no harm at all in having kids engage with this really cool resource. And I found um, oftentimes after introducing it to students in the classroom, once they realize they have the ability to get in, it's been really fun to see what some students, even a first grade class I worked with, decided to dig in on their own and learn and explore. Um, it's just so vivid a resource and there's so much information there that um, they can really earn some of, they can really own some of their own learning along the way as well. Yeah, and I, I agree, Wendy, and I've seen with the littles, the audio piece being built in, even though it wouldn't play from my iPad through today, but that audio piece is so important and so cool for them because they will put their earbuds in and, and they're listening and they're paying attention and they're actually understanding what's there as, as the guide kind of takes them through those different places. Can I ask you a question about that? Mm -hmm. The the audio, is there a way to switch that? I was just playing to switch that off. Or is it going to auto read it? So I no, you can switch it off. Let me show you. So when you're inside of. Um, sorry, I'm just figuring out where my iPad went now. Here it is. Um, OK, so when you go inside of there um, and you launch the expedition that's saved. I'm going back in my library now, right? Okay. So if I go into view VR and it's going to tell me, hey, switch this um, right there. Do you see the little narration button? Oh, if I press that. That's how I can turn that narration off. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Any other questions or comments? Anything for the good of the group? All right, so I was really trying to watch my time today because I ran late. I ran over last week, um, so I wanted to really make sure that I like kept myself right on target. So we're right on target. If you've got more questions or um, you want some help getting started, I worked with a, a teacher last week and we worked through this and she's creating um, a kind of dive like this with her students, not on this topic. 
Um, but she's she's kind of doing building it out as more of an extension activity because um, she's got some students who are moving faster um, than other students and she wants to have something that is sound there for them to engage with. Um, and so she's building out um, kind of like an extension activity just like this. And uh, that's where I kind of got the idea to go ahead and, and start working and building and sharing uh, this type of a resource. So again, feel free to take, borrow, steal anything that's here. Um, I created it for all of you. Um, and what's mine is yours. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Brian, Wendy, anything you want to add before we log off here for today? Uh, just so you guys know, the recordings will be up. We keep posting them in the when we send this out. It takes about 18 to 20 hours usually for us to get a post up. Um, but if you like this or want to work with others on this, this would be a great one to say, hey, we all have a common resource here. And so if we could get all of our fourth graders to do this at this building and we built common resources, that would be a pretty neat uh, experience. So think about how you can work with others and sharing that recording might be one way to get other people interested. And and just to reiterate one other one, like one more piece of that, really thinking about, okay, putting it out there as more of an extended kind of learning experience versus like day one, day two, day three, day four. It's more of a holistic approach to, okay, here are the learning targets that are set up throughout this, this time that we're gonna be studying this um, and letting your students kind of have the option to self-manage that. So that's kind of how this was designed versus a everyday kind of check-in piece. And they really do lend themselves to that social studies or science over time piece, it's nice. Definitely. Alrighty. If there aren't any, hit your record button. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. I think. So I see it, and I'm trying to stop. I think I already did. 